Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and welcome finally to RIS Weekends, where me and the mod team are going to be bringing you all the updates for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6 that releases on October the 27th. Every single weekend is going to be chock full of deep dive and showcase content for you to grab and for you to enjoy in the lead up to that release. We'll have dev diaries, showcases, deep dive interviews with the mod team. So make sure that you subscribe and like this video if you want more of this content going forward. But in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the brand new map for version 0.6. We're going to be comparing it to vanilla and 0.5. And I'm going to showcase some of the brand new features from this map going forward. So without further ado, let me show you this absolutely stunning new map. Well, here it is. Gaze upon it in all of its absolute glory. It is glorious. And if I remove the settlements from here, you can really see the massive impact that has gone into this map. They've been selecting settlements from primary sources and archaeological data for months now to add them into the game. And if we zoom in, you can just really see the expanded amount of settlements in all these major areas. Uh, for example, Carthage, Rome, Greece, Anatolia, especially around Babylon and Persia as well. So the Seleucids is going to be even more of a handful. But I'm just going to put on the screen right now the map from version 0.5. So you can kind of compare between the two. And I will just talk a little bit in the background about what uh, has been going on. So here's the moment, guys. How many cities do you reckon are in the game? I believe in 0.5, there was around 900 odd, about 950, something like that. Um, so that's a lot, a lot of regions compared to vanilla with 99. But now... How many do you reckon they are? Put your bets down in the comments down below before I reveal it. But it's now, here it comes, 1,719. 1,719 settlements. Truly the largest total war map ever made. Absolutely glorious. And if we come down into Greece, one of the major, major things for this update, it is the Hellenic update. It is the Greek update, guys. So it is focused on Greece. And in Greece, we see a few new banners, a few different settlements. And the same can be said when we come over to Anatolia and we go all the way up to the Black Sea as well look at those a few different settlements now if you want a lot more detail on that that's going to be coming out next week and the week after when we talk about all these minor factions but they've added in 29 new greek unplayable small factions seven new thracian ones and six new anatolian ones to populate the map in the hellenistic areas uh, which is of course what the update focuses on and that, in my opinion, really, really does add a lot to these areas. It really populates them. It means you're not just fighting rebels. You're fighting on actual AI-controlled armies, AI-controlled expansion, AI-controlled nations. And it really, really improves the experience on the map as well but of course like i say make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because we'll go through that in severe detail in the next couple of weeks but honestly playing the beta myself playing on this map it has been a joy it has been a bit more challenging a little bit of extra spice but so much more fun because there's so much more opportunity for expansion for alliances for betrayals for the battle royale feeling of the map as well it is absolutely fantastic. It is absolutely glorious as we come across to Anatolia. Let's show you just how many settlements there might be in here as well. Um, but very nice indeed. So on top of that, guys, you may notice up here in the corner, we have a few other little nations that you've never seen before 
in here. And that video is going to come out tomorrow. So I'm going to tease it now. There are four new playable nations as well. And we're going to talk about that in detail tomorrow. But I think that's a good segue to go into showing you a comparison of these areas in all their glory from vanilla to 0.5 to uh, 0.6. And I'm going to show you that cons comparison right now. Victorious, victorious. Erastus, So now you've seen the comparison, that glorious comparison between the two. Let's talk about some of the major new features in the map. And first of all, let's talk about the Hellenic world in Greece. And like we've said already, it's populated with brand new nations, little uh, Greek states dotted around the map based on real life factions, real life entities in this time period. And the most sort of major ones, as you can see, there's plenty all dotted around the map as we can see lots of different new factions thracian ones anatolian ones and greek ones and in case you're wondering yes you can make them playable in the files and i will do a video on that closer to release on how you can make all these nations playable in the files now at the minute they're unplayable just because it would really really clutter up the imperial campaign in the main menu it would really be a bit of an issue because there'd be uh, you know hundreds of factions in there but for now um you know they're unplayable but i will release a video it's very easy to make them playable as you can see plenty of different nations and like i say we're going to be going into this in great detail very very soon so stay tuned for that of course, like I said before, we've got four new playable factions as well that are filling out the areas. And they were there, they are there pretty much to fill out these areas that didn't really have anything in them to bring factions to life in those areas and provide a bit more of a challenge to some of the empires. For example, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies there that start off in a very strong position if you know uh, what you're doing but like i say we're going to be on those tomorrow so take your bets in the comments down below what factions those actually are and then i want to bring your attention to the brand new shorelines lots of different shorelines and you might actually notice that for example this shoreline is different from the real life shoreline here and it's because it's been taken from ancient maps and uh, it's uh, it represents the brand new shorelines or the shorelines that were there at the time because obviously these rivers they change over time the shoreline changes as well and that's why they may look a bit different so don't uh, complain that uh, say the uh, the delta of the nile looks slightly different because it does for a reason guys these shorelines if they look slightly different it's because of an ancient map that has shown them to be slightly different from what they are in current day borders so on top of that let's talk a 
about the Nile while we're talking about shorelines. The Nile is now navigable, as we can see. Navigable all the way here, um, past the Sinai, on the coast of the Sinai here. You can actually now get ships from the Mediterranean into the sea down here as well, which is absolutely glorious. So you can uh, do an all-island challenge if you want, hint, hint. Um, and you can, you know, do uh, navigate through here. And you can navigate all the way down, all the way down to the nation down here, to Elephantine down here as well. So if you want to go raiding the Ptolemies, be my guest. You can go and do that very, very nicely. On top of that, as I'm sure you've noticed, guys, brand new textures as uh, from Kersey, who does the Imperator map for vanilla so thank you very much to him from me and the mod team for providing these beautiful new textures you can see all through the map very nice indeed brings a new lease of life to the map and just changes it around from vanilla as well makes it look fantastic you can see these mountains and that brings me on to the last feature we're going to talk about the mountains guys are actually mapped based on real life geographical data so if you have a favorite mountain, for example, in the Caucasus, you'll probably be able to see it in here as well. I believe that one is the tallest mountain in the Caucasus, but I could be wrong uh, from my talk with Jorilaf, which comes out on Sunday. My interview with the man who made the map is coming out on Sunday, so check that out. Um, and yeah, you can see all these mountains, they're modeled on real life mountains and the relief of the land. So it should be really accurate in terms of real life. And you can go to somewhere that you know well. For example, if I come down here to maybe the southwest towards Bath. And you can see, not too hilly, because it's not actually that hilly in real life. We go up to Snowdonia, a few more mountains. Uh, but yeah, you can see sort of mountains and the, the um, undulations and the terrain of where you live or where you've been. And really, really really enjoy that because it's really cool indeed that they brought that in as well so that is fantastic that is the new features of the map and it looks so glorious doesn't it so many more nations but let's talk about the concerns that some people have had you know i get questions or concerns all the time when i talk about the map about is it going to be a siege fest is it going to be just sieges all the time and honestly guys i say this from the bottom of my heart from my testing in the beta no it is not a siege test i think the siege test thing if anything is a little bit of a red herring because a lot of people see this many settlements and think oh instantly i'm going to be doing sieges all the time but honestly most of the time the ai doesn't uh, garrison its cities that much and goes out and tries to fight battles so you'll first of all be having a lot of um, battles on battle maps rather than on siege maps a lot of field battles out there for you and on top of that what uh, what tends to happen is because the ai goes and tries to uh, tries to fight you rather than uh, garrisoning cities and being defensive you get to a city like this for example anatolia uh sorry the antigonids and you can just auto resolve these sieges if you've got big enough uh, big enough armies and i would recommend doing that and it doesn't become a siege fest if you want to fight every single one yes you can do but like i say don't do that go and search f uh, field battles they will happen and it's not a siege fest if you auto resolve those sieges against tiny garrisons and a lot of the time as well guys when you siege down a settlement um the ai tends to come and try and defend it it does everything it can to come and defend it so for example if i went and sieged down mutina over here as the romans the army from bononia would very likely come and try and take it so you end up doing a lot of sally out battles as well and that really speeds the campaign up in a lot of ways as well now the second concern a lot of people have is computer power wise Yes, it is going to take a lot of processing power, guys. You're going to need a bit more of a powerful computer, of course. Very similar to 0.5 in that regard, just a bit more processing power. But if you want to, you can, of course, reduce the sliders and the HD nature of the map and just go in it for the battles. And then the processing power will be reduced quite a bit. But of course, you are going to need a relatively strong computer to get on well 
with the new map and the map in 0.5. I would say if your game runs well or runs all right on 0.5, it's going to run the same on here. It's going to be, you know, maybe a tiny little bit slow, but not much. It's going to run really well on 0.6 as well. But I think that's going to be it, guys. I think that's going to be everything. And while we're here, let's go to my favorite nation's capital so you can see all the new uh, new settlements in here as well. Very cool indeed. While I talk about what we're going to be doing. Like I say on Sunday, we're going to have a deep dive interview with Jorolaf, the man behind the map. Um, to talk about the map, its new features, and really talk about everything I've talked about today, but in much greater detail there as well. Tomorrow, the four new factions are going to come out. And if you have watched this after the time, there's a, there's a playlist that will play at the end of this video and a playlist in the description that will have all of these RIS Weekends 0.6 updates for you in there. So check that out. But like I say, guys, thank you for watching. It is absolutely glorious, isn't it? What a fantastic new addition to this glorious, glorious game. Thank you very much to the mod team for this. It is absolutely fantastic. And from my beta testing, I have been absolutely loving it in the Hellenistic region. Very, very fun indeed. An absolute battle royale, if you may. It is a battle royale. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.